Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Weeby Reptiles. Today's episode is going to be about what types of substrates to use for your incubation containers. These are the things that I use. Again, remember, guys, this is just my opinions. This isn't fact and proven theories or anything. This is just what works best for me. You take it, use it, if you like. Uh, for two substrates, I use two different materials. Most people either use one or the other. I found combining the both is the best result for me. Um, <clears throat> What I do is I start off by getting a good container, something that has a good height to it. You want it to have a good height because when you use all this material in here, you're taking up a lot of the space. And when the eggs are incubating, they actually double in size, sometimes triple. So you want a good tall height, so that way as they grow and they swell, they don't have to get crushed by the lid. So you get yourself a nice tall container. This container here actually, um, it's one of those deli meat cups. You know the ones that got the sliced meat in it, you get it from Publix or whatever, and that's all it is. I mean, you can use those, you can use basically anything that can, you know, as a lid, that you can contain the humidity inside. <clears throat> so what you do is, like I said, you start off with a nice good layer of vermiculite, thumb thickness, you know, I got pretty thick thumbs, so can't go by my measurements, but, you know, just get a good thick layer. And get it nice and wet. What you do is, you, you don't want to wet the, the perlite, all you're doing is wetting the vermiculite. And what you're doing with the vermiculite, you get it nice and soupy, kind of. Not, not soupy, soupy, but like wet wet to the touch and then when you do that you add a layer of perlite on top the perlite what it's going to do is going to keep the eggs from being directly on the moist vermiculite because like I said you want the vermiculite to be nice and wet so that way you're not always going in there having to raise you know the humidity levels because the vermiculite dries out so that's why I use two layers so that way this can always stay nice and moist and the perlite stays in dry and keeps the eggs from being submerged in water but they're always that much closer to that humidity after you've done that, you want to put little divots in there, kind of like little tray spots for when the eggs go in. You know, give it a good spot for the eggs to cradle in this spot. And um, also, get yourself a container with the lid. And in the lid, your best bet would be, see how I have tape on there? You want to put the tape down first so that way the uh, name can be removed after you've done, you know, after you've done throwing the uh, perlite away and the eggs have been hatched and stuff, and you can reuse the container. If you use the lid itself and just right on the lid then this thing's going to be useless afterwards but um, what I do is I put the tape on them, pop holes in these little holes that I placed here and the reason why you want the holes is you want the air to be able to escape so that way it doesn't build up any kind of bacterial or moisture or mold so you want a good airflow circulation inside the container <clears throat> that's why I put the holes on top of the lid and then you just basically seal it up you want to put a date so you know how many days you've been incubating, you want to put the name of the parents so that way you know the pairing. Now if you have only got one dragon, then you really don't have to worry about naming it, but if you have multiple clutches, I suggest you do so. You can also get a little Smart Brother printer or whatever you like. Me personally, you don't need to spend so much money when you can use a Sharpie and some packing tape. So like I said, you get holes in your container, make sure you cover it up, and that's way you have, like I said, a nice layer of vermiculite and a nice layer of perlite. And the perlite, you don't want to have a big thick layer because like I said, when you do the little cradling, little contain, the little uh, divots, you want them to be able to still somewhat see that vermiculite so when the water goes through, it'll you know get drawn in by the eggs. And those are the two materials, like I said, I use. Vermiculite and perlite. You guys can use whatever brand you want. These are the two that I bought. I'm not gonna label the brand so that way I'm not getting plagiarism or problems with anybody, even though Stay Green is the name brand of that one. <laughs> but Go ahead and use whatever you like. Uh, perlite and, like I said, vermiculite are the two materials that I use personally. So it's all my choice. This is my my, my choice, so you can do whatever you like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause this real quick. Give me one second. I'm going to take you upstairs because Mimi is actually laying eggs. And this is the reason for this container. So give me one second. We'll start back up. Okay, so now what we do is you get your dragon and you remove her. Try to get her out of there nice and peacefully, calmly, because she's been through a lot laying eggs you see you got a bunch of little eggs now unfortunately they're not going to be all good some of them will be infertile so you have to toss a bunch out but what you want to do is you want to check your egg and candle it and make sure that it's actually fertile and what you're looking for is a red ring this is not a fertile egg and I'll explain to you why there's no red ring whatsoever it's just a nice yellow coat I'm going to show you the difference between the two a fertile egg and non-fertile. If she has any fertile, doesn't look like she may have dropped any fertile. But sometimes what you'll see is you see that little ring right there? That's a possible. 
It's possible that that's the fertile. See that little ring right there? Let me candle that real quick. And no, that's not fertile. But we'll try anyways. You never know. And then we got. Let's see. Well, doesn't look like she dropped any fertile eggs this time. So it's just going to be an unfortunate situation. She's got to go through this without dropping anything fertile and it sinks because it really takes a lot out of them. And you can see that there's going to be a lot of, like the flat ones are definitely not going to be fertile. So the only ones I was really checking are the ones that had a good stable to them. Even that one has a little ring, but that's not the ring you're looking for. You're looking for something with a nice deep ring. So again, I guess this isn't the best clutch to uh, show you guys how this works, but at least I can show you guys how the vermiculite works. Looks like Mimi's gonna go back underneath and try to push some more of these poor infertile legs out. Oh, poor thing. But yeah, that was Mimi showing you guys how we do it. Your perlite, vermiculite, <clears throat> and like I said, you just put them in a little cradle like so and let them sit. This one is not fertile. I just put it in there so you guys can see how they work. This camera will focus. Yeah. But you see, that's not a ring. That's not a good ring. That's just a ring, period. So, yeah, but it's okay. Hopefully her next clutch will be better. We're not going to force her or fire her. Look at the poor thing. Just dropped three more infertiles. But that's the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, concerns, feel free to ask. Thanks.